In November 1810, Governor Lachlan Macquarie and his wife Elizabeth visited Ben Kenny, a property of 5,000 acres granted to John and Elizabeth MacArthur. The area was then known as the Cow Pastures, after cattle escaped from the First Fleet were found here grazing wild. It was here that the MacArthurs introduced merino sheep to Australia and the wool trade began. Ben Kenny became Belgeny and then part of Camden Park Estate as the MacArthurs prospered. To commemorate the bicentenary of Governor Macquarie's visit, the present Governor of New South Wales, Her Excellency Professor Mari Bashir, retraced her predecessor's footsteps. She was welcomed by members of the seventh and eighth generation of John and Elizabeth MacArthur's family. Oh, please come in. Oh, thank you. Well, it's significant because Governor Macquarie was widely respected for what he did and the fact that he came here to this property so, so long ago, we, we believe, is, is important to commemorate. Governor Macquarie camped here at Barragal Lagoon for three nights. He recorded in his diary that he was entertained with song and dance one evening by local Darawal people. Wonderful to be with My family greeted Lachlan Macquarie here in 1810. My family are greeting him here today, 200 years later. Thank you. This, this is a very, very moving moment for me, in fact, for all of us. So at the very outset, I want to declare my great respect, Glenda, Thank you. my respect, affection for the traditional owners of this land upon which we gather. Thank you very much. On behalf of you all, I have the joy of unveiling this plaque. Thank you. Thank you, Today, is an historical event because we have repeated a little bit of history um, by um, being here to greet the governor today. I have a traditional neck connection to this land through my ancestors who belong to this land and I have a continual connection right through till today because after the Appen Massacre which took place in 1816 the surviving families moved onto the MacArthur, John MacArthur's property here at Camden Park and they continued to live, work and die here right up until 1973 when the property was sold to developers. Governor Macquarie recorded his visit to the farm in his diary. He wrote, we called at Ben Kenny on Mrs MacArthur with whom we sat for a little while in a small miserable hut. So we found down here the, what we believe to be the small miserable hut and the three cottages that were built in the 1820s. So from the artefacts we can tell the small miserable hut was occupied, could have been occupied anywhere from 1790 onwards. Uh, historically we know it was built around 1805. Now that was the residence occupied by Elizabeth MacArthur when she came down here to look after the important business on the estate. Thank you very much. They are. They are? They're small but they're really priceless, oh. that's it. The artefacts have all been broken up as if they'd been kicked around again and again. But there have been a few artefacts that reveal the presence of people with social standing because they're imported from places like France or uh, England and they're products that weren't generally imported. So we can, we, can, we can almost identify personal belongings of John and Elizabeth MacArthur in those little artefacts. They're the size of a thumbnail, but they speak volumes. It would be hard to do justice to the sense of joy and privilege that I have touching our past 200 years ago but 200 years of goodness that began with those wonderful pioneers particularly the MacArthur family and particularly the women folk who were so steadfast and courageous but also the vision the diligence and the sheer hard work because it was really from their efforts that the great prosperity of Australia has grown. John MacArthur and Elizabeth MacArthur saw a beautiful landscape which had marvellous potential for livestock, uh, cattle and sheep, and they uh, were able to then link up that livestock production with the massive demand for wool in England, which really laid, uh, laid the foundations for what was Australia's wealth for over 100 years. Certainly a fairly big vision. I mean, MacArthur came out as a, as a lieutenant in the, in the Second Fleet and basically was a 
a middle rank military man with no particular resources behind him. And so starting out with virtually nothing, he built up uh, a very substantial uh, business empire. But, and that was basically through a combination of, of vision and, and dogged determination. And it all goes back to John MacArthur, Lachlan Macquarie, their good women, and the convicts who supported them and did the hard work. So it's a wonderful combination of great talent. And even the cows who escaped from the first fleet herd. And years later, they're found down here having multiplied healthily. Such an Australian cheeky thing to do. And it was that entrepreneurial spirit, something the MacArthur's had in spades, that accounts for their standing in Australian history. I think the uh, early MacArthur's left an astoundingly large legacy. And it's not only John, but Elizabeth and, and their children, particularly uh, Edward, James, William and, and the younger John. Now, most people would uh, associate John MacArthur and his family with the founding of the wool industry, and that's, that's certainly correct, but they also founded the wine industry, and uh, in, a little bit later on in history, basically, uh, the dairy industry. So three really important uh, rural enterprises they founded, and in addition to that, very important uh, contribution to uh, botany as well as horticulture. William, uh, yes, William MacArthur imported something like 2,000 different species of plant into Australia. And here, on land they once owned, that legacy lives on in the Elizabeth MacArthur Agricultural Institute. We could easily be here for a long time if I detailed all of them, even though it's no problem for me to speak that long. <laughs> and among the speakers on the day were Sydney primary school children, who paid tribute to Governor Macquarie's legacy. When he arrived, he saw chaos, a rum rebellion and a colony that had mutinied against his predecessor. Governor Lachlan Macquarie will remain large in the history of this nation. His strength of character, foresight and personal belief were crucial in the progress of this colony. The changes since that day have been profound. The testament of his legacy is in the buildings he left and the vision he gave. He was able to take a colony that was in complete chaos and turn it into a civilised democracy. He laid the foundations so that I can now live in one of the most successful, productive innovative and envied countries on earth. The bicentenary of his visit is a chance to celebrate how far modern Australia has travelled in so little time. I love and cherish our colonial history. So for me it's almost been a spiritual feeling of gratitude and that I have the privilege of visiting and seeing these early beginnings of our great uh, modern Australia and to see the, the humble origins of the huts in which they live, the, um, yeah, the deprivations they would have suffered but the optimism too that drove them on to succeed in this divine, truly wonderful environment. <laughs>